Folks, if there's one thing the world uses to steal the hearts and minds of our children, it's dinosaurs. And I travel and teach all over the world. And everywhere I go, people ask me questions about dinosaurs. Because I find that people are very uncomfortable about this topic. They don't feel like they have sound biblical answers about these incredible creatures. Folks, what I'm going to tell you is this. The foundation of our thinking in every area needs to be the Word of God. And the thing that most Christians really shy away from and they really don't think it through is this. What we see in God's world really does agree with what we read in God's Word. But, you know, the second world says, well, the Bible's a book of myths, fables, fairy tales. If you believe the Bible, you're not really scientific. You're not intellectual. This is what the world says they know. This is the dinosaur family tree. And I've seen charts and diagrams and illustrations like this you know, since I was in grade school. And we know this particular chart is, in fact, a very scientific chart. You know how we know that? It's got scientific words on it. You know, Cretaceous, Jurassic, Triassic. If you've got really good eyes on the far left, it's got the millions of years. So if it's got scientific words and the millions of years on it, it must be a scientific chart. So what this chart's trying to tell you is that, you know, 280 million, 300 million years ago or so, you've got this sort of ancestral, you know, pre-dinosaur creature, and it's merely existing along, and all of a sudden, poof, you know, you have a mutated offspring. A whole new type of creature develops. And then another, and then another. And about the time it gets to that first line, it must have had like a really bad day. Because poof, it just mutates into everything. And then later on, you get this branch that goes off to the right. So you start off with one creature. You end up with the ornithischian dinosaurs, the cerithian dinosaurs, the birds, the crocodilians. You start with one creature. You end up with all these different varieties of creatures. Now, if you're paying attention to this chart, you'll notice that the lines come in two different colors. You've got the yellow portion, the sort of highlighted portion. And you've got the gray lines, the sort of grayed out portion. Can anybody tell me what the yellow lines in this chart represent? The, the highlighted portions, what does that represent? Anybody? Those are things we actually have fossils of. We got fossils of that creature and that creature and that creature and that creature. We got fossils of all those different types of creatures. What does the gray line represent? The, the, the grayed out portion of this chart, what does that represent? Actually, it's not a guess. It's an educated guess. I've got 12 years of college. I've got six letters after my name. I do not make guesses. I make educated guesses. You know what an educated guess is? It's a guess. But see, those of us in the academic community, we don't want you to think that we make guesses, so we have code words for situations like that. The extreme rarity of transitional forms in the fossil record persists as the trade secret of paleontology. The evolutionary trees that adorn our textbooks have data only at the tips and nodes of their branches. The rest is inference. However reasonable, it is not the evidence of fossils. So let's go back to our chart and see what we can actually determine from this chart. Let's start with the creature on the far right. When that creature reproduced, were its offspring the same kind of creature or different kind of creature? Same. What about the one fourth on the right? When that creature reproduced, were its offspring the same kind of creature or different kind of creature? What about the one third from the left? When that creature reproduced, were its offspring the same kind of creature or different kind of creature? Same. So what we have is the basis of this chart is fossil evidence of fully formed creatures reproducing after his or after their kind. I know I read that somewhere. Where did I read that? What about in the Word of God? Creatures reproduce after their kind. So when dogs reproduce, they have? When cows reproduce, they have? When cats reproduce, they unfortunately have? That's free, by the way. So when dinosaurs reproduce, they have what? Dinosaurs. And folks, that's just as complicated as this is.